to do it, I hope. <laughs> yeah, everybody is okay. And yeah, today is the last class of the discipleship theology. Uh, I try to give you more biblical foundation about discipleship, not the uh, basic techniques and the how to run the discipleship program and how to set up the discipleship program. And mostly, uh, when you talk about discipleship, a lot of times we based on the how to set up the discipleship. Uh, but uh, I, this time, I want to really think about as a foundation of the discipleship and how you need to understand the discipleship. And um, I try to talk to you, discipleship, discipleship is not like just a program that well established and church are practicing. Uh, it's a part of that, but uh, what happened? Yeah, it's kind of connection is bad, sorry. And still, we have a lot of things to talk about discipleship, but remember the basic uh, uh, concept of the discipleship, right? It's not just a program, uh, it's not just a uh, Uh, it's not just a program, and it is the way that how to become like Jesus Christ and how to uh, follow Jesus Christ that uh, shows that we are the disciple of Jesus Christ. And so, discipleship helps you uh, helps you to show that you are the follower of Jesus Christ in your word, in your uh, action, deeds. That's why it's really important. And then at least you think, you think that if you are a Christian and then, oh, he's a Christian, he's different from us. You can show that one. But not just uh, uh, the free concept, but still you can show the difference. Yeah, because the, you practice the, the word of God and you practice the values that Jesus Christ teaches or yeah, taught us in the Bible. That's really important things that. But before we start discipleship, and basically, uh, we got to remember what's a discipleship like. And again, and I kind of summarize discipleship in what's a discipleship. How can you define discipleship? Depends on, yeah, in the first day, we have a lot of different approaches, your know, understanding of the discipleship, and then how can you define the discipleship? It should, it should make a special group and special people. But uh, through the, the your whole lectures, uh, disciples, it doesn't mean that the special group of people, right? Specially committed people who, yeah, the discipleship is not raised to the specific, yeah, the people for the specific task. But disciple means that to everybody who follows Jesus Christ, who put yeah, their faith in Jesus Christ, right? So we are disciple. Whether you are mature or not, we are disciple. We are disciple. So discipleship is a, yeah, the process, right? Right, discipler who help them to grow to the followers, right? And that's, that, that's a little bit different word than this. And discipleship is yeah, to live a fully human life. Like we already learned last week then what? God created us in his images, right? That means that who we are, and then just think about the way God created the human beings, and mental aspect, and spiritual aspect, and, and relationship aspect, and what? And physical aspect.
But yeah, to live a fully human life in this world in union with Jesus Christ, in the in you abiding with Jesus Christ. Not just to live by yourself alone. And not live by yourself with Jesus Christ and his people with others who follow Jesus Christ. It means the kind of communal life to become a Jesus, yeah, disciple, mutual disciples, and grow conformity to his image, grow conformity uh, to become like him. We, we learned who Jesus Christ was, right, in the Bible. That was our, you know, kind of our outline, and then, you know, of the Jesus Christ, we share, yeah, we learned last week, and then, yeah, conformity to his image and help others to know and become like Jesus Christ. Myself and others, that's a discipleship. Just think about discipleship as a, as a human being, live a life with abiding in Jesus Christ and we help you know, with others and grow, grow, grow uh, conformity like conformed to Jesus Christ's images and what? Help, yeah, we support myself and help others. If you are not growing, if you are not, yeah, if you are not uh, the, what is it, mature disciples, and you can help others, right? If you are not mature, how can you help others? Maybe you lead them to immature way and wrong way. So this discipleship is like maybe unstructured discipleship or maybe structured discipleship. Unstructured discipleship meaning that there is no structure, but we had a life mentoring, right? We had a relationship and then try to support and try to guide them, right? That's a mentoring. And try, try to someone keep on the track in Jesus Christ, right? That's mentoring. You don't, it's, yeah, maybe you can be, you don't have to meet them regularly, but whenever time is available and we can talk about life and what, what's going on and there is no specific topic, maybe, yeah, that's our life, sharing the topic. And how can you go, yeah, the, 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 what's the mentoring is that how can you go back to Jesus Christ and we, Jesus Christ, and then how can we live? How shall we live on earth? On earth, right? That's a mentoring. It needs to be unstructured. You don't have to be first lesson, second lesson. You don't have. You don't have to give the lectures. But structures mean that there is a yeah, special, well organized yeah, program. Oh, this is a secret for who seek the base and all oh, they need to know this one. And then what about, yeah, just come for a learner and then they need this one. And who is, yeah, like it depends on the level and then we can provide, yeah, the material that they, the material that would help them to grow, right? Grow in Jesus Christ. That is a discipleship program. And then, there is a lot of different ways that we could do discipleship. Um, when I was in college ministry, and then usually we had Bible study together, and then there is a kind of a discipleship track in my organization, uh, uh, Christian club, yeah, at campus, and then and and. There is a kind of a 21 months, yeah, seven, yeah, seven steps and then 21 months program. So uh, almost two year programs. And then they provide from the beginning the all kind of how to serve others to become a leader, as a leader, and then they provide the programs. And then that is kind of a, um, uh, based on the small group. 
and 10 people, 8 people, whatever, and people out there, they get it together and they do it together. And like memory verse and a Bible, for memorize Bible verses and uh, devotion every day, and they check uh, how much you do, how, 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 how do you want to learn all kind of stuff. And that's a small group saying. And then maybe even though we, we, we cannot say the discipleship track, but the Bible study helps a lot, right? Because he helps to become like Jesus Christ. A lot of, yeah, a lot of different activities, ministry team, and outreach team, and mission team, and a lot of small groups. What's the purpose of the small group? He shows that to live like Jesus Christ, right? What about the, yeah? Classroom and nowadays, and then you can just open the class to everybody, and then teach about the word of God, teach about your discipleship. And depends on maybe they mix with the small group, and then like the lectures, and they divide it to the small group, and they discuss and they share, and then, like the lectures, right? It's a little bit different, and. Maybe personal, like uh, last week we already uh, learned about unnegotiable this yeah, negotiable yeah, so what about discipleship, and there will be a personal process. Whether it's your personal or small group and classroom, and but the personal response is very important, right? So, Individual response is really, really important. So we got to know that the individuals live have to grow in Jesus Christ. So it doesn't matter the structured or unstructured, and personal or small group and classroom, it doesn't matter. What is the purpose of the discipleship? Just think about people who really want to become a Christian who follow the way of Jesus Christ. That's a discipleship. Who has kind of a heart? It doesn't matter. Classroom and small group and personal. Depends on your personality. Maybe I prefer the small group rather than the classroom. Maybe I'm really prepared the one one to one one on one relationship to learn about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Different ways. Yeah. Bill hold you know, hold the horse and then he had kind of yeah, a sixfold definition of being confirmed to Jesus Christ in images and then uh, maybe it will overlap with the last week, but I want to introduce and then he he that mind believe what Jesus believe. Okay, conform yeah, conformed to Jesus Christ. What believe? Do you remember do you remember what Jesus Christ believe? Transform the characters, so live the way Jesus Christ lived. Yeah, we learned, right? Conform humility, love like this, and then, and love is Jesus' love. Relationship with others, community, and people who are really in need, right? And relationship with God, habit. Train as Jesus trained. Maybe, yeah, he empowered by the Spirit and he led by the Spirit, Spirit filled. He set aside time to have an interrelationship with God while he was doing, while he was doing ministry. What about service? He said that he came to serve others, not to, serve, to be served. He gave his life for many as a ransom. What about influence? Hmm? Lead the way that Jesus Christ led. What is his threat? 
Rossi is right. We need to serve. He referred to a normality of the religious normality. Right? Just think about it and what we need and why, why, what areas you are weak and to conform, you know, com conform to Jesus' heaven. How can, how can we make the environment which well help to the kind of discipleship? Yeah, usually today, our uh, lectures is from this book, which gives a lot, lot of in, yeah, insight and ideas and then help you. But well, it's not about how to make programs. Yeah, but I have another books, but this time I don't use that one. This book really helps you to think about how can you create the uh, create discipleship. So, how, could, yeah, how can we make kind of environment to really run the discipleship at your church and your home? Just a basic one is it's really you put on trust others, nothing happens. Just think about when you go to church and someone is there but they are leader, you put on trust and you cannot work with them, you cannot follow what he said, right? Trust is really important. As a small group leader, as a leader, settler, you gotta get you know, you gotta get you, know, you gotta get the credit from yeah, you know, others. Yeah, you know, he's a really good man. I really to yeah, you know, I really to have a journey with him to become like Jesus Christ. Trust. Where's the grace? Accept mistake. Accept the failure. Don't judge them. Always, even though I'm fail, God accept me. He just Christ accept him as I am. That's the environment to very important. Just think about the discipleship is not just a straightforward. Oh, I did and I mastered this level, I mastered this level, I mastered. No, not like, not like that. Even though the same problem and they keep coming to you, whenever you have given them opportunity to devil, to devil, they will keep trying to, you know, attack you and fail, you know, try to make you fail. That's why we need grace. We are freely, yeah, we are, we are saved freely, given by God's grace, right? That is a kind of environment. We gotta accept it, increase it, whether you are mature or not. Humility, be humble, not be arrogant, don't judge others. Arrogant, the arrogant always judge others and take, take prop. Submission. So accountability based on the submission. And sometimes you don't listen to others and you don't listen to kind of your as a leaders and there is no way to work. Submission is very really important. Don't be assertive. Even though it is people's group, and well, who is the head of the group? Jesus Christ. If we don't want to submit to Jesus Christ, why, 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 why you be there? Why are you there? Right? Affirmation. Okay. Always encourage them and support them. You did a good job. Even though they fail, it's okay. Yeah, we can try it one more time. We can do it. Like affirmation though. That is basic. It just makes sense. Maybe uh, always think about when you think about the discipleship program and small group and yeah, yeah, 
personal whatever is at church and then what kind of environment do we have? Do we have a trustful relationship with that someone and small group and church? You are always compassionate, not judging and accepting. Yeah, they the good uh, good things that um, uh, elements that we really ready for the discipleship or not, right? Yeah, practical aspect of discipleship and how can we do the discipleship and then that is a, uh, we already talk about a little bit different way and yeah, so one of the, um, yeah, yeah, this is a little bit kind of a technical part and then um, when you start the discipleship, you just think about it, how can you start? How did Jesus Christ start it? After he got baptized and then before he started, you know, started ministry and then he called his disciples and 12 disciples and how how started? How did it yeah, how yeah how did it, yeah, how did Jesus Christ start it? Start. So when you're thinking about the discipleship as a small group, maybe think about first of all selection. People with Jesus method. Without people you cannot do it. Who really need it? and who has a desire to grow? Right? Who has a potential to serve others? You know, everybody is a candidate though. But still everybody is a candidate, but you cannot do everybody like Jesus Christ. He always remember next generation, next step of ministry. And then just think about people who really have a potential and have a desire and can mature and serve and others. And that's one of the ways that. Association and then you select people and then how can you associate with the others? Jesus Christ stay with them and journey together and eat together and work together, right? How can you associate with them? Maybe nowadays the association is kind of yeah, once maybe if you have a small group and once a week, maybe get it together and depends on sometimes and maybe if someone is really struggling with and if you wanna encourage them and you can set aside time, extra time and can we have a lunch, dinner and then you can encourage them like that. But still, after you select the people that you gotta work with them, share your stories and listen to other stories and then yeah, study the Bible together and pray together and that that's kind of association. Concreation, yeah, cons consecration in the Jesus requires obedience. Set aside yourself and he always obey to God's voice. Right? The consecration in the yeah, how we are um, that's the set aside and clean yourself and okay, I follow you, obey you. Impartation in that he gives himself away and to think about why he gives you know, his disciples. Once he sent out the disciple and two by two, uh, seven people and twelve people, and then he imparted uh, his power on them. And in the name of Jesus Christ, he ex yeah, exo exorcised, uh, yeah, expelled the demons, and did the miracles. Not all, not all about them, but in daily life, and they teach me.
And just to kind of, yeah, David Sword is kind of yeah, serving others, right? To uh, let them grow and really to value your head and keep them away and like times, energies, and your resources, and monies, and all that kind of stuff. Demonstration. Jesus Christ showed them how to live. It's not just a teaching. It's not just following the text of their shows. Back to the story is powerful, and testimony is powerful. And especially if you want to if you are a leader of the group and they want, show them how you are struggling and how you overcome the, uh, your struggles and temptations. Demonstrate how to live, how to follow. Delegation. And if you just uh, are doing up to this level and still you hold them, but Jesus Christ send them up and then and Jesus Christ entrusts them to the rest of the ministry, which is what? Making all, making disciples of all nations, right? Delegation is very important. Some point you gotta prepare them and then show them and delegate, lead by the let them do it. And then what is that? After delegation, and then let them see how they're doing right. That is a supervising is very important. Supervising is kind of accountability as a leader. Right? That is a really important thing. But sometimes we fail missions, and because why missionaries are working together and very successful. But when missionaries leave the West and left the area and the countries and the ministries kind of collapsed. It's gone. But there is not this one. They do demonstrate what they will delegate and they will provide them to do it by themselves. They need to you know, they need to confirm that they have the you know, ability, confidence to do that. And supervising them if they need some, something to support them behind and uh, next to them. And reproduction. And Jesus here yeah, respect them to reproduce. Do you know Matthew 28, chapter 28? That's a kind of process. It makes sense to me. I don't know what you guys think about. Always there is no re re you know, reproduction. It didn't work. The ministry doesn't go to the next generation. Yeah, I try to do, do that. It's not the exact same and then why I'm doing a mission with my families and especially my kids and then in the beginning and yeah, in the for my kids and the, the yeah, youth in the mission field and then try to show them and work together and then Next time, encourage them to do by themselves, and then okay, and then next time, and give them more and more. And later on, in the last, and then they can do it by themselves. But I failed on uh, reproduction in missions. They know how to do it, but they did once. But I mean, the, what, I fail, what I mean to fail, they did once and I supervised them and they prepared everything and then it was really good. But next year, they didn't do it. It means that they didn't reproduce. And people are scattered and nobody's left in Mexico. It's kind of sad. Always a reproduction is very important. So when you think about the discipleship, even though it's a small group, one on one is it okay? Uh, always you know the his, his uh, what he is, or right? his spiritual his spiritual level, and then um, always it comes into mind, and then you can get some you know, read the material, you know, read the material together, and you can share about it. And, you can pray together, but it's okay. But 
when you do a small group and then especially at church and then think about the people's uh, the, uh, the level of a different uh, the maturity everybody is not mature even though whether they uh, been at church about 30 years more than 30 years or 20 years and some are really not mature right and here is a five kind of yeah, level of maturity. And then when you think about the discipleship and think about where they are. Right? I mean there is a seeker. Uh, yet they become a, they yeah, they are not Christian and yeah, not, they are not a Christian yet and then they need to know the truth. They are seeker. Oh, I need to know that Jesus Christ. I need to, they never heard about Jesus Christ. Sometimes they heard, but they are attending a church, but not yet. They don't accept Jesus Christ as they, as they say, but you cannot do the discipleship because they are not believers. If they, yeah, they, yeah, think about it. They don't believe, how can they become a disciples? No way. When Jesus Christ called the disciples and then wow, they followed and even though they have mis yeah, misunderstanding of Jesus Christ and wow, they left everything and immediately they followed Jesus Christ. There is a secret, right? They are looking for Jesus Christ. They are looking for faith. What about they are starter? Starter means that Oh, I accept Jesus Christ, but they don't know anything about the Bibles and the, and basic knowledge of the Bibles, and they never been at church, and they never heard about they they never seen the Christian cultures, and then they are stubborn. They are stubborn. Right? How can you help them? What about the struggler? And then some of them, they already started, and, but they cannot jump up the next level of the life in terms of a faith. Always struggle with this one, this level. I did really basic stuff. And this, this, they cannot jump. And they just keep struggling and struggling. They are not growing. Bible, Jesus Christ said, that, do you know that the Parable uh, of the sea. It's like the uh, They are the the seed fell under the water. It's uh, in growing and the uh, sprouting and growing the uh, water, but the this is uh, over covered the, the seed and they cannot grow and. It means that Jesus Christ and the priest yeah, teach them you have worldly worries, all kind of stuff, and then you cannot grow. What about statement? Statement is a kind of yeah, statement is kind of nominal. They've been at church for a while and then they pretty kind of yeah, matured, it seems so matured, but no motivation. They just uh, try to dare. Right? Stuck there. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. We are come, what is it? come out of this. They are kind of stagnant. And then they don't know. They don't have a desire to grow more and more. How can you challenge them? Get out of the normalities. What about stable? Who really well establish their faith and try to do daily devotion and try to grow like Jesus Christ and then yeah, people who had compassion and desires to grow. So everybody's a different kind of yeah, spiritual levels and yeah, in my church and we try to establish the discipleship program and then we are thinking about their level. It's not easy. As a church, we try to 
implant a you know, plan implant a program just think about different level of people is there and oh what is uh, this one this level and second level and third level and what kind of what you know, and uh, and it's really complicated as an individual so what uh, small groups and the one-on-ones and then there are a lot of different ways there but always concern about the people's yeah how they are in in terms of the their yeah, level of their maturity of faith okay yeah and then there is the, some uh, examples they have the, the disciples program and it's not there is right there is wrong programs and it depends on the church directions and depends on the pastors and depends on the yeah, people's need and then don't think that it just a copy as it is and to apply and a paste in your church, this doesn't work. Always you gotta, you know, you gotta have a benchmark and then try to how how this program work at, at the yeah, in the context and then how can we just understand our church context and then if you want to really adopt other program then see the other programs context and programs and look at the, your context and Little bit twist a little bit different way. That is really important. And then, and I, I saw a lot of churches in, um, in around the 70 and 80 and 90, 90s. And uh, discipleship is really popular in Korea. And then a lot of churches trying to establish the discipleship program. But they will think about the church situation and they will understand about discipleship as a program. They try to adopt to the program, yeah, the discipleship. They try six months later and one month later, a year later, the problem is gone. People are hurt. Like that. Sometimes they, they never done before. So they it's really awkward and they think about it, always understand your you know, context of the church and context of your situation and then that's really important to know them, how it works, that they're, they're contested, and see that their kind of content compared with your need, and then how can you apply. This one is a really famous church, it's a discipleship, it's a diamond of discipleship in the world, and uh, the deep warrants by uh, created by Nick Warren and as the church and um, I don't yeah sometimes I don't remember his church name in yeah Urban down a little bit down in Lakewood the city of the city of Lakewood and then there and then what is the church name? I'm oh, sorry. Uh, let me Google it. Sorry. <laughs> me. Yeah. Well, and Yeah, Saturday of church. Sorry, Saturday of church. <laughs> uh, sometimes, yeah, I always say I kind of slip of tongues and then I know, but yeah, I cannot remember and I cannot say, yeah. That church kind of decides the program itself. Uh, life development process in his book, The Purpose of a Dream Life, and then I don't know whether you guys have read and then, and they have kind of, yeah, there is a picture how they provide in, in like a diamond and baseball and there's a first base and second base and third base and platform as a class 101, 201, 301, 401 and then here is a kind of a uh, 
idea of the one-on-one -on -one class. First is committed to membership, the process of knowing Jesus Christ. And you have to, you need to have a membership class and then to the what? Uh, the process to knowing Jesus Christ. That's the first phase. And the second phase and committed to you know, maturity, the process in growing Jesus Christ. A little bit, a little bit different way, up level. And third base, and committed to ministry, involved in ministry. And members, and mean that uh, you make sure you are Christian, and accept Jesus Christ, and church members, and grow, and serve, and, and ministry. And then committed to missions, and then the platform is about process of sharing the Jesus Christ with the others in, in, uh, in, the, in this country so, and outside of the country. So, yeah, that is a, that is a yeah, different, that's the, 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 that's the way that the disciples is uh, working in the church, right? And a lot of people uh, read this book and really attracted by and then try to, to use the book, right? And because they want to learn from this book and they want to learn from him. Another discipleship program is that kind of sequential and segment. Um, if you kind of reset the stages and then you consider the 10 steps of the discipleship in you know, the, the crusade for Christ, campus crusade for Christ, and then there is other program that I attached on the note, and then there is sequence of the first step and second step and third step. And like I was in yeah you know, in camp, you know, campus ministry at college and then they were first, second, third, yeah. If you, you you cannot skip the second and always the first step and second step, third and always you know, follow the step, right? Kind of sequential and segment but segmented each step has a different uh like yeah, different uh so they provided different material and yeah, they needed to have kind of yeah, um, different like, characteristic that they needed to know, right? There is a stage uh, step, yeah, discipleship. What about the discipleship models, another models, and then, and Bruce? Uh, he's a really famous uh, theologian, New Testament, and the train, yeah, the, his book, The Training of the Twelve, and then, and, and, there is, yeah, there is, yeah, there is, yeah, there is, yeah, this obviously models, and then, and, oh, uh, sorry, uh, he, yeah, uh, I'm really confused with it. He's a uh, uh, different name. B. Bruce, and then he said there is uh, yeah, three, um, uh, uh, four stages kind of a discipleship in Jesus Christ. And then, first of all, and, and come and see. And uh, there was an Andrew and then his disciples, and when he called, and then, and Come and see. And then he didn't know about, yeah, he didn't explain about Jesus Christ. And then just well, come and see. That's a wonderful way there. And disciple did. And then occurring during the uh, four or five months around this period, right? Come and see period. And when Jesus introduced a group of disciples to the age of himself and ministry. So he said, uh, okay, and come and show the who, who he did. Who show the miracles and the, a lot of things. That is a common status. And then come and follow me in Matthew chapter 19 and then 16, yeah, Mark chapter yeah, 1, 16, 18. And it's like a 10 months period with a lot of the Bible clause and others. And temporarily left their profession and traveled with Jesus Christ. And then he said, uh, it's like a 10 months period and then and come not see and follow me 
and he's just kind of analyzed like this and then come and be with me and then the last year and a half, 20 months and during the, the time in Jesus Christ and Jesus concentrate on the 12 the called to be with him so they could go out and preach really and come they are really separated and travel and eat and teach them right that is yeah come and be yeah, come and be with me and then and was the last stage is uh, remaining me uh, describes the most dramatic change in disciples yeah, underwent and Jesus was leaving and now what? Uh, begin relating to him through the what? Uh, the spirit and then through the church and then he gave them okay stay don't leave the city and stay right and then yeah uh, the disciples and then waiting for spirit and then spirit came down from the heaven and the uh, built a uh, church uh, uh, for, right early church of world that is kind of a different different stage of the Jesus yeah, from the Bible it's a little bit different yeah right he provided yeah, biblical uh, per, yeah, perspectives and then show their how yeah Jesus Christ the disciples and then to think about interestingly he divided yeah, yeah about notice yeah the Jesus Christ life span and then yeah, he did. It's a really perfect job. And to think about it, and a little bit similar, right? And then just you know, need what is model, and then there's a sequential and segment model, and this model a little bit, yeah, same. What about the other model? Is there is so. Uh, If you read and growing true disciples by George Barnard and then in the 2001 and 30 introduced the different models of their discipleship. So about two, two, 20 years so a little bit old, but the confidence model is that they try to equip the people. They don't uh, create the other programs and try to plug in and try to support and let them grow. Yeah, it's a little bit unique in yeah, uh, Pentecostal Bible Church in Dallas, and then Mission Models and uh, Fellowship Bible Church of the Little Rock, and the uh, neighborhood model is that the uh, yeah, Perimeter Church in Atlanta and World. Yeah, this is what is kind of they try to deal with a lot of issues and you know, by wisdom and try to get answer and the wisdom yeah, kind of overcome the yeah, the yeah, the problems, yeah. And fellowship Bible Church in North and Plano in Texas, and then lecture lab models and those schools to check it out. See that the model is a kind of, yeah, you can guess the through with, yeah. This one is a little bit different, that's why I told you a little bit, this one, and then other than that, and then you can see the kind of, the names of the discipleship, yeah, uh, program, in, yeah, implies, right? And if you read another thing, it's the organic discipleship, it's mentoring others from the spiritual maturity and discipleship leadership. And maybe you can read the book and then another model then if you really want to see it. But uh, there is no right, yeah, wrong models in discipleship, right? You want to know that one. So always there is, yeah. Uh, depends on the, the direction of your ministry. Uh, depends on the you know focus, yeah, kind of emphasis of your ministry, and then maybe. But uh, one thing you, we should know that what is the discipleship, right? And okay, this is the last slide, and then. Um, Discipleship, when you, yeah, this is a really practical one. When you think about the discipleship, and then um, you should remember that the four, yeah, purpose of the discipleship, purpose of the discipleship, 
why you are doing it in selfish. This is your theological foundation you know, to apply to your nature. And this is a theological foundation why we need to discipleship. Purpose. We already read in the one of your definition in the Bible, but nowadays it's a lot of people are um, um, they kind of uh, derailed from the purpose of discipleship and that Jesus Christ showed them that there is one of the means that what to um, make the church bigger, attract the people to looking for good programs and yeah, sometimes and kind of uh, the drive the you know, church members to normal and yeah, maybe the original purpose is kind of helping to grow, but uh, the operation is not like that. So, always when you design any education program and any program, think about what is the purpose. What is the purpose? Should you know that you don't have a purpose, and then and it's a hard to evaluate. And what is our objectives? Objectives. What is the goal? Purpose is a long term goal. So objectives and the objectives and uh, it's a short term goal. And uh, if you usually not on the service program as you saw that is by uh, stage uh, based on the stage or step. Each has uh, specific goals, each has specific goals. And if you don't have any objectivities, then, then you cannot evaluate. And then just think about, and there's objectivities there, and then how can we make it sure achieve this objectivity? There is a kind of a concern that or oh, this achieve, this is not achieve. There is a specific cursor that shows what fail or not. Okay? So always a purpose is there, and then this is the long term, and then just think about when, how can you evaluate the, always we will evaluate. And Purpose is here, and if you set up the discipleship like the seven steps, like I had before, and then what is the purpose? And then you got to evaluate the purpose of discipleship. And when people finish all the seven steps, and then what, what was the outcome? That's evaluation. Always, you gotta make how to evaluate. There is a, should be, yeah, should be course, yeah, should, your course should be in the evaluation specifically. And then you can see, you're not gonna lose the, you know, the, what is the heart of the discipleship. Other than that, it's easy to derail from the, the purpose, original definition of the discipleship. Okay, so each stage you like yeah, need one ends and then we like others and then just think about and there's this object is there, specific object is there. Right? So you gotta show the specific object and then you gotta let them know the, the who yeah, the disciple group and let them know that you should learn this one, you should practice this one and you gotta let them know, remember, and always. And at the end of the class, they should have the right knowledge of their own, and they should practice and try to practice day by day, even though it was not perfect. So why this period and the people just kind of a uh, little bit used to do? It's not awkward because they've never done that before, but still you tried it once, twice, third, and then what? Well, 
that we used to and then you are now occurred, like evangelism and then you never done the uh, go stranger and then show about gospel and then it's not easy. But you know the how to say and you prepare and prepare, you know, practice the, the gospel presentation and then yeah I did and prepare everything, memorize everything and then I picked the one way, uh, one method and memorize. I used to usually use the bridge and from the navigator and then I memorize the whole thing, everything and then practice and practice and practice and go and sometimes I forget some part <laughs> but as you do more and more and while you are comfortable and you are not going to miss the uh, whole thing, yeah, some things, right? So what kind of your proper resources are assigned? You, you should uh, collect a sign and uh, each level depends on the people you are. You got to know that kind of uh, 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 proper uh, resources that they can understand and they can uh, use the, the material and resources and they, with that they can grow, uh, grow, right? And that's really important then. That's why uh, when you design the curriculums and then always think about right resources and right steps and right stage and right places. What about timeline? Remember the timeline, how long it takes. So three months or one month or ten weeks? I'm talking about the kind of uh, developing discipleship program. So Always think about the timeline. I, I saw, um, I was in o Omaha and I, I tried to see the, the churches and because um, my daughter is there and then I asked which church do you want to go and then she said uh, because of the pandemic and she just uh, uh, picked on a church and then listened but she doesn't like the church. Okay. I start always talking about the political stuff and then okay let me look at it and then I saw the, a lot of the churches and programs and then their ministry focus and then I saw church the disciples program and then I attended with my daughters and then when I was visiting her and then and there was kind of a six months program and one year program, two six months a year for your six months programs and you have to pay for the class. It's really a lot. It's not a hundred dollars. It's like when you take a class at school, how much do you have to pay? If you are international student, it's a lot. Right? It's a, I remember the like more than thousand dollars for six months. But when you take a class, the money is not the kind of a matter, right? But when you do ch at church, money is matter. I don't know why. Yeah, so interesting. And they have two six months classes, this average class. And like a class, I think it's based on the lecture and then small group, yeah, kind of a sharing. But they said uh, two classes a week, two hours. And it's a lot. Just think about the semester. And usually semester classes are how long? It's a three hours per week. But that class is six months. Every week, four hours. Yeah, like different though. Depends on how uh, design and uh, sometimes yeah, give them enough time to process, digest the material or sometimes and too easy class and then um, takes kind of uh, too long it's kind of boring, right? But it's not boring though, usually when you think about the basic stuff and then pray and reading the Bible every day and then try to um, uh, have a fellowship with the other Christians and then 
try to share the gospel, then it's not easy or anything. Maybe once a month is easy, but sharing the gospel, especially with your co-workers, with your friends, and with the stranger, it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah. And maybe some churches and provide like a different program like a, uh, to our yeah, like, like um uh gospel explosion yeah, expo expo explosion like this and then uh explosion yeah explosion and then that is to try to keep the how to share with the how to share the gospel with others and then they practice practice and they learn the whole things and practice and then they go and try to share, yeah go to strain and try to share the gospel there's a different program there's a different program yeah maybe on the discipleship program and there's a lot of interested groups and then under the top of the disciple program and if they are finished the disciple program and then they already know what we need to do and they must still need to grow and then they will special interest group, you know, the church provides and then maybe you can help, right? So evaluation is you know, always a really important though. So uh, always evaluation of purpose and objectives and then resources, timeline and those are just so always a, there is a specific question though to evaluate and how can you evaluate and based on the what, what you outcome that you expect right always there this is a uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, object what is the expected outcome this is a cursor to evaluate always there is there no. A lot of people say, that, okay, our objective is yeah, to know Jesus Christ and to, yeah, to, be, yeah, to have an intimate, intimate relationship with and then they give us the material and the timeline, but there's no evaluation. How, how can you evaluate? What is your kind of criteria to evaluate? So when you develop the program, always think about this one. Okay, think about this one, and then maybe one, two, three years, and then uh, time goes by, and then you can really have a good yeah, program that people need, right? And feed it to them. Otherwise, just kind of run the program, and then, and yeah, we have to do programs, and a lot of people getting together, yeah, kind of have, but there's no, uh, uh, outcome and then what is the purpose? Right? I can see that a lot of the church are doing this as yeah, this average program. That's one of the poor we are program though. Now I know people are really do hard while they taking the class and then and read the Bible ten chapters every day and then there's a lot of assignment and memory memory verses and read some books and then a lot of things and do the Bible study for the, the uh, class and then but after that I know during the process and then they learn a lot but what if they don't practice you know, like you know reading the Bible pray every day and they don't practice yeah you know, to the activity that they taught during the class and after break yeah after finish the design program they don't pack that one. What is the what is the what is the profit for the program, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Already, I already told you the operations. So maybe personal, small group class, and mentorings, and then there's a special interest class and special ministry like mission and social service and a lot of different you know, programs that you can provide it but let them know that why we are doing what is the purpose of the program the ministry and that they need to grow through the ministry get involved in not just uh, doing stuff right 
So, um, when I think about the um, pictures of the disaggregation, this is a purpose is always in the middle, core. And then, a lot of the different approaches and problems here. Maybe mission and evangelism and then serving and outreaching to the communities and then uh, serving uh, who really need in, in the church community and worship. Even though it's once a week, and, but how can connect with our purpose and then we still yeah, worship God and through the worship we can become like Jesus Christ. It's not a good music and fancy kind of a yeah, blinking light and kind of a smoky all background. I don't know how it, how it helps. Right? Bible studies. Here and there is a Bible studies and small groups and interesting group, yeah, interested in group ministry and then discipleship programs. And just think about everything is here. Yeah, we cannot exclude from the discipleship because it, it, it helps to become like Jesus Christ. It's not a just a kind of, yeah, the activity should not be, yeah, should, shouldn't be kind of showing off. This is the way that practice, or to practice the, what Jesus Christ did. And then we try to imitate Jesus Christ. We, that's why we are doing all ministry. It's not just the holding people or the holding people. It's not just for the how church look like, looks like, right? Just think about the purpose of a discipleship. That's what I'm thinking. Our goal is to follow Jesus Christ as a church. How can we practice yeah, follow, yeah, to become like Jesus Christ? A lot of different ways that, a lot of different activities that church can provide. Now, when I was serving at church, and I was one of the board members, and then uh, one of the jobs is that we always evaluate, we have, yeah, Seven, yeah, six core values, and then every year, and we kind of have yeah, uh, uh, evaluation at church, and then people how they respond, and then look up the yeah, our uh, core values, and then try to review, and then try to help the people to grow in the area. And. This one is really helpful for the, this book is really helpful, but uh, I didn't talk about the uh, leaders. Yeah. This book shows some criteria of the leaders, and then who can be a leader of the church? Who can be a leader of the discipleship? Any idea? Any idea? So usually today classes, yeah, I picked up most yeah, things in this book. So maybe you can read this book if you are really uh, want the practical, but it's not much detail. So maybe get some idea and then go to research and online and yeah, visit the churches and then and that is really important to about who's one of yeah, preparing leaders, yeah, preparing leaders, and who can become, yeah, who can become a leader? Mm. So, in our church, when we try to uh, select the board members and then we always uh, uh, talk about who is uh, we, we don't do the popular vote to select the elders and then 
we usually uh, um, talk about who's you know, someone is on and someone is off and then because the term is three years and then every three years I, I just I, I just served it for three years and then after that and someone need to replace me and then and every time it's a we can have a three uh, con, two conservative you know, consecutive uh, the terms that we can serve and then after that uh, we have to take a you know, break and then if you really want to serve in the board and then you got you got to process again and and get approved by the, the church congregation and so our you know, selection process is that we talk about someone is really and godly and who try to serve you know, come ready for the ready to serve and then we talk about if someone is kind of you know, up to, you know, uh, all, yeah, show the objection and then we discuss and then we put it aside and then uh, kind of application process and uh, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah this kind of application how they use money and personality kind of and how they have a biblical values all kind of we it's not just your yeah, process and it's a lot and how they how they live in yeah you know, um role model yeah live in their you know, families and yeah you know, based on the biblical criteria and yeah you know, Timothy and Titus and then we show the kind of check the mark and then we have an interview and then we kind of select the uh, leaders but. A lot of churches kind of it's not like us, but in Korean churches usually they do the proper vote, and so sometimes they are not ready for the serve as a leader, but they they are really popular at church, and then they become a leader, and a lot of problems are going on. And then just think about the leader selection process is really important. It's really important. Who's going? Who is leading the discipleship program? So who is leading the church? Who is serving the church? Should be, they should be what? What true? Why they can they already become a good be example in following Jesus Christ like that? But uh, there is a lot of criteria, but uh, this book said that uh, uh, it's really um, good things that you can read, yeah, and character. If they are really hot-tempered, no. If, if you don't have endurance, no. If you if not gentle, no. So character is really important, like a mother, father, like a Paul. Who can take care of their group members and who can help them their group you know, the disciple teams and members to grow in Jesus Christ? They are suitability, so they are really suitable to become a leader. Some of them are not, even though I don't know, it depends on the church, but our church is coming up. And always check the suitability though. Some people can sing very well, and they can should be quiet instead of being a teacher. But a lot of people they don't think about it regardless of they're not a good teacher, but they need people and they okay we need a teacher, so can you teach in Sunday school? Become a teacher in Sunday school. No. Just think about it. The characteristic of a discipleship and then it should really fit into the program and fit into the criteria who willingly serve and availability. They need to avail to serve others, right? They cannot become like Jesus Christ. They can be they cannot like yeah, Jesus, they cannot yeah, Jesus Christ like, who live together, eat together, but Still, 
even though they are good person, but if their time schedule and they are not available, then no way. Faithfulness, how faithful you are. If you are not faithful, people cannot trust them, right? Yeah, there is kind of a criteria he suggested, but there is other criteria though. So you're going to look it up and then who is really committee, kind of available, available, available is kind of belongs to your committee and then faithful and well round and true like modern father, mother is kind of nurtures and father is discipline. And yeah, that's the leaders. And then before you start the discipleship, and if you like Jesus Christ, select the people who really can start the ministry together. That is one way that you can do it. So, and how can you train the leaders? Even though they are really good characters and something yeah, about sometimes. They don't have, they never be they never had a kind of experience and then they need to live one by one and they need to digest it and then they think about how can help them in the way, right? So they need a training, they need a training. Not just a, this is this obviously can do whatever you want. No. We gotta uh, train them and when they serve as a leader and then regularly meet together and evaluate the meeting and what they need and you're going to know and pray together and support each other. That's a lot of work. And yeah, and I gave you kind of a specific kind of guideline and then yeah, you could see the kind of a different discipleship yeah, texts and then but um, I pictured and then I write down, but this one is yeah, one of the yeah, discipleship program that I had before, which is really helpful. Yeah. Uh, look at this the book, and this one is kind of the same book. I really like it, but uh, this one is not a really basic one. Uh, people start the basic, and maybe this one is around uh, eight book and nine book and ten books and previous and the other books is from the navigator, and uh, it's a day. Dave, Dave, yeah, David Lawson is kind of, yeah, Dawson is developed this program and uh, which are, I like this one, but it's about 10 books and each book has about 12 and sometimes, yeah, 12 lessons and 10 lessons and it takes a lot of the, uh, months, maybe. This book is an introduction of a book, it's about seven seven weeks is a lot of, lot of reading and that one is yeah uh, there is kind of a yeah, checking is there and but the navigator always emphasizes and reading the Bible every day and pray every day and uh, evangelism every day and yeah there is yeah kind of a yeah, there is a there is a basic um, checking is there and then when you go, I didn't, yeah, this, yeah, this is profile, and, but another one is that they say, yeah, check the, how you're doing, how your group is doing, and then this is uh, equipping the saints. Uh, if you look up to the equipping the saints, and then they will lock Dawson, and then book is coming out, the organization is always out there, and then you can see the book, and then yeah, this is a really kind of a good book to, uh, uh, train the leaders and then uh, another thing is that maybe you consider the uh, 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 campus crusade yeah, crusade for Christ and then 
There is another thing is that nowadays there's a lot of programs are yeah, available outside and then uh, you can look, look through and just uh, try to find the right one and then you can maybe take out some material and you can edit depends on your context all right and okay so we learn about the, the discipleship theology based on the theology what bible said and then today and kind of the, the last kind of class to uh, think about this you know, application how can we implant and what kind of models out there and then how we do process and then and you know how the, how do we raise and train the leaders and then I gave you basic idea and then if you are interested and then you can pull yeah this one and then um, uh, maybe theological aspect and then we already yeah look through the, the books our textbook and then you can see that and then maybe if you want to plan the but I want to really uh, uh, think about the the theology of the uh, discipleship. Don't forget the, the basic definition based on the Bible, not the based on your need, right? And try to you know, implant the problem in your context and then I hope that you learn first and then you can help others. So if you have any interest, I'm really interested in this one and then because I my life is involved in this fellowship and I'm doing right now still and then if you are interested in no more and just let me know and contact me through the office and then they have an email and phone number and then you can ask them right if you are really interested in them and sometimes if you want to text me uh, phone, you know, call me and then text first and then I don't pick up the phone number that I don't know right and I hope you guys learn something about discipleship, which is to help you to grow yeah, in Jesus Christ. And then, and I hope that you can do something yeah, for others too. Okay, thank you very much for being with me. And then I hope yeah, you guys have a really good uh, uh, holidays. And then, yeah. I, I think the record this is earlier than one one more one week earlier and this week is a Thanksgiving week and happy Thanksgiving. Maybe you could see the next week. Okay, have a have a great holiday and see you next semester.